We join together in the liturgy for the sacrament of holy baptism. It begins for us on page 268 of our hymnals. As we turn to page 268, I invite you to stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Dearly beloved, Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, and the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful and are under the power of the devil until Christ claims us as his own. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. How is your child named? Atlee, June, Thien, receive the sign of the Holy Cross, both upon your forehead and upon your heart, to mark you as one redeemed by Christ the crucified. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, according to your strict judgment, you condemn the unbelieving world through the flood. Yet according to your great mercy, you preserve believing Noah and his family, eight souls in all. You drowned hard-hearted Pharaoh and all his host in the Red Sea, yet led your people Israel through the water on dry ground, foreshadowing this washing of your holy baptism. Through the baptism in the Jordan of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, you sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. We pray that you would behold Atli June Thien according to your boundless mercy and bless her with true faith by the Holy Spirit, that through this saving flood all sin in her which has been inherited from Adam and which she herself has committed since would be drowned and die. Grant that she be kept safe and secure in the holy ark of the Christian church, being separated from the multitude of unbelievers and serving your name at all times with a fervent spirit and a joyful hope so that with all believers in your promise you would be declared worthy of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. From ancient times, the Christian church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for baptismal candidates and catechumens. In our Evangelical Lutheran Church, sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed and taught in the small catechism. They are, whenever possible, to witness the baptism of those they sponsor. They are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of the holy life of faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. Is it your intention then to serve at Lee June Thien as sponsors in the Christian faith? If so, answer yes with the help of God. God enable you both to do, will and to do this faithful and loving work and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. Amen. Hear the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the praying of our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
At Lee June, the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I invite the congregation to join with parents and sponsors in answering the questions I now ask. Atley, June, Theme, do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth? Yes, I believe. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried? He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Yes, I believe. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting? Yes, I believe. And to the parents of this child, do you desire to have your child baptized? Atley, June theme, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Atley, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Uh. Atley, receive this white garment to show that you have been clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covers all your sin. So shall you stand without fear before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the inheritance prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And receive also this burning light to show that you have received Christ who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which shall have no end. In holy baptism, God the Father has made you a member of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir with us of all the treasures of heaven, one holy Christian and apostolic church. We receive you in Jesus' name as our sister in Christ, that together we might hear his word receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. We welcome you in the name of the Lord. I invite the congregation to stand for prayer. Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserved and enlarged your family and have granted Atlee June Thien the new birth and holy baptism, and made her a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly implore you that as she has now become your child, you would keep her in her baptismal grace, that according to your good pleasure she may faithfully grow to lead a godly life, to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally with all your saints obtain the promised inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Atley June, God's peace be with you. Amen. Let me blow the candle out. You may return to your seats. Welcome to Christian Worship in God's House at St. John's. We gather together on this 22nd Sunday after Pentecost 
and join in Divine Service Setting 2. It begins for us on page 167 of our hymnals, or you may follow along in your service folder. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in singing the uh, psalm for, uh, for our intro, Psalm 130 and 131 is printed in your service folder. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We sing our hymn of praise. This is the feast on page 171 of our hymnals. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day as printed for us in our service folder. O oh God, the helper of all who call on you, have mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your Son that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. We invite the uh, Sunday school students of our nursery through first grade classes to come forward as they lead us in their anthem, Kids of the Kingdom. We certainly thank our Sunday school, primary and nursery students for that uh, energetic song this morning. Our Old Testament reading for the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost comes to us from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31, verses 7 through 9. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant women, 
and she who is in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with pleas for mercy, I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We speak the words of the gradual. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. The epistle reading is from Hebrews chapter 7, verses 23 through 28. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But Jesus holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save the uttermost those who draw near to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer sacrifices daily, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he offered up up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests, But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. And they came to Jericho. And as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped, and and many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We join together in the common confession of our Christian faith. We make use of the words of the Nicene Creed. They are printed for us in our hymnals on page 174 or the inside back cover. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate 
He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 646, Church of God, Elect and Glorious, hymn 646.
Grace to you and peace from God our Heavenly Father and from our risen and living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon meditation is our gospel reading from Mark chapter 10. We see in this passage that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He has traveled from Galilee in the north down the east side of the Jordan River. And crossing that river, he now passes through the ancient city of Jericho. Jesus is with his closest followers, but not just them. Far from it, in fact. There is a whole crowd of religious pilgrims with him. They are on their way to Jerusalem for the annual celebration of the Passover festival. This is a very exciting trip for these people, for Jesus has caused quite a stir wherever he has been. And they now are holding out hope that he will do something big when they get to Jerusalem. Well, Jesus knows very well what awaits him in Jerusalem. And he has been preparing his disciples for it. His betrayal, his arrest, his torture, and then his crucifixion. Jesus will indeed do something big in Jerusalem. He will suffer and he will die as the full, the fr final, and the free sacrifice to pay the price for the sins of all people. As we hear in our epistle reading today from Hebrews chapter 7. And then Jesus will rise from the dead as God's paid in full stamp upon the price of our sins. Jericho is just a step in Jesus' journey to the foot of the cross. It is the city of Palms. It is the lowest city in the world. It is the winter palace of kings. It is an oasis in the desert. And in fact, that is the name they gave to the casino they built there about 20 years ago. Jericho is also the first city that was conquered by the Israelites under Joshua after their exodus wilderness wandering from Egypt. They crossed the Jordan River in order to conquer the land of Canaan, the land that God had promised to them from the time of their ancestors. At the time of our text, this group passes by such a common sight that he may have gone unnoticed by them. It, was a, it is a blind man who is begging along the side of the road. Blindness was a typical ailment then and there. And there was no way for blind people to support themselves financially other than by begging for the generosity of others. But this day will be far different for this particular blind beggar. His name is Bartimaeus. That Mark even mentions his name indicates that he may have been well known in the early church and that his name would have been familiar to Mark's readers even 30 years after the event happened. We can, uh, he cannot see, or what he cannot see, Bartimaeus learns by hearing. There is a commotion that is taking place around him. That commotion is because Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And at this point, Jesus has become somewhat of a celebrity. Bartimaeus must have heard of Jesus, of his teaching, of his caring, and of his miracles, such as healing. As the saying goes, strike while the iron is hot. Bartimaeus is going to take advantage of this opportunity by crying out to Jesus. As we heard in our psalm reading this morning from Psalm 130, Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Though physically blind, Bartimaeus has a spiritual vision that those around him with perfect sight cannot see. We prayed about this in our collect this morning. Give us the eyes of faith to see your Son. 
Son of David, have mercy on me. But in doing this, Bartimaeus gets rebuked. He is told to be silent. You can't say that. Why not? Because this is a title for God's promised Messiah. This is what you would say to God's anointed Savior who is to come from Judea. Not to a traveling teacher and a carpenter's son from that backwater village of Nazareth. If Bartimaeus had had a Twitter account at that time, it would have been canceled for spreading messianic misinformation. So it is in our world today. Those who have the eyes of faith to call upon Jesus as the Son of David, as our Savior from sin, we are told to be silent. We are told, keep your faith to yourself. Don't bring it out into the public square. Christianity has no voice in our culture or in our society. The religion of secular humanism, that is what is to rule the day and our culture. And so there is an attempt to turn our First Amendment freedom of religion into a freedom from religion. There are those who want to make it simply a freedom of worship. That is, we are to keep our faith confined to within the four walls of our church buildings. The culture of our time wants to cancel those whom Christ calls to confess him as being the son of David, our savior from sin and the Lord of our life. And so for us today, Bartimaeus serves as a great example. For notice in our text, he will not allow himself to be silenced. He cries out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Mercy, God's pity, God's compassion upon us in our sin. And again from Psalm 130 today, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. Jesus hears and answers this prayer with wonderful, welcoming words. Call him. Jesus is on an important journey to Jerusalem, but here he takes time to care for one of his creatures in their need. They report this good news to Bartimaeus. He throws aside that cloak that is covering him and collecting the coins of the people passing by. He jumps up and he goes to Jesus. And now we hear a good example for our prayer life. Jesus asks him, what do you want me to do for you? Well, duh, Jesus. Isn't the answer known? Shouldn't the answer be obvious? It doesn't take the divine Son of God to realize that this blind man wants to see again. And yes, indeed, Jesus obviously knows this. But he wants to hear it come from the mouth of Bartimaeus. So also today, Jesus knows all of our needs, but he still wants to hear from us in our prayers to him. What is your first reaction when trouble arises in your life? Do you turn in on yourself and say, I can fix this? I can take care of this? I can use my money, or I can use my intellect, or I can use my power of persuasion, or I can use my brute strength, or I can use my personal connections. I can take care of this trouble myself. But really, what we should do in the time of trouble, first and foremost, is to turn to our God in prayer. Jesus answers this prayer of faith for a man who knows Jesus as his Savior from sin and who trusts in Jesus to care for his physical need. But unlike so many who call out to Jesus when they are in need, but then forget and ignore him once this crisis of their life has passed, Bartimaeus 
healed of his blindness, now follows Jesus in faith. He goes with him on the way, as our text says. And again, this is the way that leads into Jerusalem for a Palm Sunday parade, a, a way that leads through Jerusalem during Holy Week, and a way that leads out of Jerusalem on, on Good Friday to Calvary's cross and Jesus' death. But those who also make this trip to the tomb early that Sunday morning find Jesus' grave empty and hear the angel's announcement, He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. By his suffering on account of our sins, by his death died in our place, by his resurrection for new and eternal life, Jesus does indeed have mercy on us. In our holy baptism, as we were privileged to witness again this morning for little Atlee June, through the written word of the Holy Bible, and as the body and the blood of Jesus Christ are present for us here in the Lord's Supper, Jesus again calls us to himself. And it is my privilege as your pastor to say to you, take heart, get up. In his word and in his sacraments, Jesus is calling you. What is it that you want for him to do for you? The eyes of faith will see your Savior at work in your life for your good. Follow him on the way. Don't stop. Don't give up if that travel seems too difficult. Don't wander off of the path if the trip becomes too boring for you. And certainly don't go in the opposite direction when your faith life is being opposed by the cancel culture of our times. For this journey with Jesus on the way is one of life. Life with all of the Holy Spirit's power now. Life with all of Jesus' mercy here. And life with all of God's glory to come. It is life with our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In our prayer of the church, we remember those listed for us under healing and comfort. We add to that list St. John's member Ken Williams as he is hospitalized. We pray for those who serve in our nation's military and as emergency personnel. We pray for the Christian wedding of Derek Voss and Lori Billingsley that will take place here on Saturday. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones to physical death, including the family of Patricia Selix, grandmother of our members Riley and Olivia Candler. We pray for favorable weather for farming, safety in the fields, dependable equipment, and blessings on the harvest. And we pray for relief from the COVID pandemic, for safety of healthcare workers, and for those deciding between a job and a vaccination. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We stand as we join in the prayer of the Church. Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, Lord, in your mercy, send laborers into your harvest, Lord, and preachers to gather your elect from the farthest parts of the earth. Sustain all pastors and missionaries faithful in their callings. Bless our schools and teachers, our congregations, and all their servants, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, you have appointed us as priests in your kingdom, not to offer dead works out of our own weakness, but to offer prayers and living sacrifices made holy, innocent, and unstained by the once-for-all service of Christ, our high priest. 
Make every Christian household constant in prayer and good works, since our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. Lord, in your mercy. Strike down the haughty, O Lord of hosts, and every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. Protect and defend those who serve to protect and defend us as members of our nation's armed forces, law enforcement, and emergency responders. Lord, in your mercy... O Lord, save your people and be a father to your Israel, the Holy Christian Church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry to you for mercy, especially as we remember Wilma, Alice, Will, Ed, Donald, Elroy, Ruth, Ken, Cindy, Marcy, Joanna, Joy, Doug, Michelle, Nelda, Betty, Marlene, Ron, Marge, Barb, and those we name before you in our hearts. Give them steadfast faith and be pleased to grant them recovery, that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Bless and protect all healthcare personnel who serve us in our time of medical needs. We ask that you would protect us from this COVID pandemic, grant relief from it to our world, and guide those who are making employment decisions caused by it. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of all love that is true and pure, we pray that you will bless Derek and Lori on their wedding day with the joy of your presence with them and the love of their family and friends surrounding them. We ask that you will grant them a lifetime of peace and prosperity, health and happiness, hope and joy, and a shared faith and forgiveness in the name of our Savior Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord of all life, we place into your care and keeping Patricia's family as they mourn her earthly passing from them. We thank you for the fond memories they have of the life she shared with them. We trust that you will comfort them in their grief with the knowledge of the resurrection to eternal life, which is your gift to us in the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for the blessings of the harvest that we are witnessing in our area. We pray that you would continue to grant strength and safety to all those who work the land, who tend to the livestock, and who transport the harvested goods that you provide, which so abundantly bless our bodily lives every day. Lord, in your mercy, give eyes of faith to all who commune this day, that believing Christ's promises in his testament, they would discern the true body and blood distributed here in the sacrament, and so taste and see that he is good. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the singing of the offertory. It is printed for us on page 176 in our hymnals or in our service folder. We continue with the service of the sacrament. It begins for us on page 177 of our hymnals. We speak the responses of that page. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. 
It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.